everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Easy Crypto News. I'm your host, Elliot. And today we're going to be discussing Bitcoin. We're going to be chatting a little bit about its energy usage. But specifically, we're going to be learning about um, this alternative, Ethereum, uh, which has this new protocol called Casper. And Casper is pretty cool. It could completely change the way blockchain or cryptocurrency, um, basically how it's mined. Um, and it could really kind of set the stage for, you know, which cryptocurrency ultimately takes dominance in the space. So right now, Bitcoin is just, you know, way bigger than everything else. But that could change and that could be based on the mining techniques. So we're going to get a, get into that in this video together. Uh, so, you know, real quick here, uh, we have this cool article from powercompare.co.uk. And, and what we're looking at right here is a map. And basically, countries highlighted in orange are using more than their average energy um, expenditure on Bitcoin mining. Um, so, you know, real quick before we kind of get into the statistics, they provide basically a huge list. And that's what I kind of wanted to show you. I thought it was interesting as we look at a country by country breakdown. Um, but when we take a look at, you know, how much energy be, is being expended to mine Bitcoin, I, I was pretty much blown away. So, um, 0.13% of the total global electricity consumption is devoted to mining Bitcoin. And, and, and like that's that's like a massive, massive amount. And it, basically at the rate it, it, which it's growing, um, the estimate is that by 2020, um, you know, Bitcoin mining would consume all the world's electricity by that point. And that's crazy. So basically, that's obviously not a sustainable rate of growth, right? I think there will be a plateau at some point. But by, by current um, growth patterns, I mean, that would be the day at which we'd see basically an expiration of, uh, you know, how much energy we could, con you know, create versus what's being consumed by Bitcoin. Um, but if we take a look at um, electricity consumption and then what percentage uh, Bitcoin mining consumption relative to the country's use is being consumed. We see that we start off here. China is very low. United States, people are using electricity for a bunch of other things. Um, Russia was actually pretty low in this list, which surprised me. Uh, as well as India, I thought maybe these two would be higher. Um, I was kind of going by, I guess, you know, what I perceive to be the strength of the economy. And, and the bigger your economy is, the less uh, bi of a big piece the, the, the currency might hold. Uh, but, you know, as we scroll down this list here and, you know, we see that very quickly, actually. So let's see by number 61 here, we're already at 100 uh, percent of the country's usage statistics. That, that's crazy. Uh, 60 countries in we're already at 100 percent. And that's just Bitcoin. Right. Not taking a look at any of their cryptocurrencies. Um, and if we get down towards the bottom of this list, we're starting to see, you know, 5000 percent. And we're not stopping. We're going. Um, <laughs> We finally get to the Northern Mariana Islands. And uh, I mean, this number is, uh, let's see, uh, we have 60 million percent, basically, um, of the the, uh, the country's energy usage. So I guess that means they're importing electricity. I guess that's how that would work. Um, we can also kind of see in the country, um, you know, what states are, are conducting uh, the highest uh, percentage electricity usage um, within the United States. So if we kind of scroll down this list here, um, they didn't break it down by percentages, but we can see like Wyoming's very high, South Dakota makes sense. I guess there's a lot of farms and people people mining Bitcoins out there. Montana, I guess like property is pretty cheap. Hawaii is pretty shocking here to me. Uh, maybe someone can drop a comment. Hawaii and Alaska are just so high. Um, Alaska, I get, again, a lot of territory. I guess there's a lot of energy up there, like oil. So, uh, you know, energy must be pretty cheap. I know a lot of people run generators out there. But I assumed everything would just be super expensive in Hawaii. Everyone I've met has told me that. So drop a comment if, if you happen to know why that's the case. Now, as I have started to gain a better understanding of cryptocurrency, I wanted to basically go over a quick overview, like how mining works and we basically need to learn two concepts, this proof of work versus proof of stake. And once you kind of have an understanding of these two concepts, you'll have a much better understanding of mining. And we can kind of get into how uh, Ethereum uh, Casper um, really could have an edge in the market. But before we get to that, let's understand a little bit about mining. 
So um, I'll just kind of read the quote here and then discuss it a little bit. So mining is a process of validating a transaction or block in a network by the process of complex algorithms. I like that complex algorithms, we'll say that in air quotes there, uh, to prove and validate the correctness of the transaction and thereby add uh, the new block blocks to the chain. You have heard this term mining and miners more in Bitcoin than all coins. What does it take to be a miner and do mining? So basically, it tells us you need a high power processor based computers running continuously with complex mining algorithms. Again, that complex term there. What this comes down to is you basically need a very, very powerful computer. You run this algorithm on your computer and it can add new blocks to the chain and that's how you get uh, Bitcoins. Now, the important thing to understand here is, is how do you add uh, basically blocks to that chain? Um, and th there's two ways in which you can do that essentially. So there's this proof of work uh, that we'll talk about first. And this is primarily Bitcoin's method. Um, so they actually provide a really nice analogy here. So imagine you're in a math class um, and you're taking an exam along with other students in a classroom. Uh, the student who can not only come up with the correct answer, but can also come up with the complete proof. Remember when your, your high school math teacher used to tell you, yeah, it's not enough to give you the answer. You need to show me how you arrived there, show your work, right? Scratch paper, that sort of thing. Um, so you, you prove your work. And not only that, you need to be the first one to get the, get the answer. So it, it is, in fact, a zero-sum game. Um, and if you can complete those steps, there, therein lies the, the Bitcoin mining, right? So that's how that works. Um, and, and it lists some features here. I thought these features were pretty cool. I think this is pretty high level. So um, what, are, what are some of the downsides? Well, it requires more electrical power and that you know, ties into that whole power usage statistics we were just taking a look at for Bitcoin. Uh, higher computing power hardware, which is expensive. Um, and it's just not if you're a millionaire here, but even in that case, right? Like, um, this is a multi-billion dollar industry, right? So like a million dollars, it's probably pretty small in the pool now. Uh, possibility of miners moving their hardware to mine a different coin if their reward is better there. So like loyalty can be an issue. And with more and more coins, uh, getting released, miners rewards, uh, basically become more scarce. It's harder to mine bitcoins. So you need like more and more comp uh, powerful computers. And as you can kind of guess, that becomes a, a, an arms race, right? Um, so in, there's an alternative out there and there's this, this uh, item called the proof of stake. Um, and, and the way this works is this works with something that they call a validator. And they say it's equivalent of a miner in the uh, proof of work system or Bitcoin. We're gonna, we're gonna think of it that way. Um, and, and so basically your val validator has value uh, for, t for two main reasons or, you know, two different uh, factors can, can basically uh, change the value of your validator. So they call it the amount of stake, which is just basically the, the number of coins and the age, basically how long you've been in one spot. Um, and they basically use age as a factor um, to say that you you know you're you're a more trusted uh, validating resource. So um, it also tells us here you know if you move your coins from one address uh, or wallet to another, the aging gets reset. That's pretty cool. If I ever get into mining this stuff myself, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Um, and basically, what this allows uh, it allows building trust and a distributed network. So that's pretty cool. It's a distributed network with loyal validators. Um, who have a high stake of coins. The validator earns the part or whole of the transaction fee. Um, in, in proof of stake, it is not mining, but forging, which is done by the validator who, uh, who will process and forge a block to the chain. So I also get the, the sense here that you can s uh, split um, part of the coin out. And I believe that also exists in Bitcoin. Uh, but that definitely seemed like um, that was very easy in the, pr the proof of stake documentation I've read so far. So kind of with those tools under your belt, um, let's kind of delve into what is uh, Ethereum uh, Casper.
protocol. And this is a crash course. I actually just stumbled upon um, this site here. It's blockgeeks.com, and they have a bunch of guides in here. I thought they were all pretty awesome. Um, so they actually cover what is proof of work and what is proof of stake. You know, we just kind of talk about that. But I do like they have some um, nice uh, graphics here. So proof of work is a requirement to define expensive computer calculation, also called mining. Proof of stake, the creator of a new block is chosen in a deterministic way depending on its wealth, also defined as a stake. And we talked about that's just the number uh, of, uh, you know, coins. In this case, it'd be Ethereum's coins, you know, uh, that you've had for a longer period of time. Um, award is given to the first miner who solves each block problem. And in uh, this proof of stake here, uh, the proof of stake system, there is no block reward. So the miners take the transaction fees. Uh, in in uh, the, the final uh, difference here is network miners compete to be the first to find a solution for the mathematical problem. And in proof of stake, currencies can uh, be several thousand times more cost efficient. So that's not really like a true difference, but like basically, um, you know, th there's way less uh, electricity being used here. So, um, one of the huge benefits of uh, Ethereum Casper is obviously the reduction in electricity. It's obviously great. Uh, we don't want to just be burning our natural resources to create these digital currencies, in my opinion. It's also silly that, you know, I think that we need the, 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 the basically, you know, there's a problem of the rich get richer, right? People with uh, better computers, um, you know, just win the Bitcoin mining game. So that, that's that's not so awesome, right? Um, but, uh, you know, as we, as we kind of get into this a little bit, um, there's basically two types of Ethereum Casper we want to learn about here. There is Casper FFG, uh, and this is basically a hybrid approach. This uh, has both the proof of work and proof of stake systems that work simultaneously together. Um, and basically, this is going to be the first one that's going to be implemented. Uh, there's going to be a slow changeover. Uh, basically, Ethereum doesn't think that they can get everyone to just start using proof of stake right out of the gate. And the proof of stake is called Casper CBC. Um, so Casper CBC is, is basically the long-term solution that they're looking for. Um, so basically, let's figure out why we need this. And then let's also think about this in a, a bit, bit of a macro way. Uh, what could this mean for Bitcoin in the future? So it tells us here that there's several advantages of implementing proof of stake. Uh, they can all be broadly listed by the following categories. So helps achieve decentralization. Uh, you know, we learned in our last uh, news uh, together that, you know, hacking can be a thing. And in my mind, if you can create decentralization, that reduces the risk of hacking. Could be wrong about that, but that, that makes sense to me. Um, energy efficiency, you know, we talked about how much energy is being used on this thing. I think that's a positive. Will this affect the market itself? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe like part of the barrier to entry actually creates value. And let's be honest, um, I, I think many people doing the trading uh, are less concerned on that, to be honest. Um, you know, it's, it's a money game. People are trying to make profit. Um, in my experience, when people are trying to make profit, Generally, the environment kind of gets thrown out the window, unfortunately. Something to think about, even, even though that makes sense on topically, maybe that's not what's actually being applied there. Uh, economic security, kind of see what's going on there. Scaling, uh, we'll, we'll get a little bit into that. Um, and, and basically, they're saying this is a transition to uh, this proof of stake that we discussed earlier. So um, <clears throat> achieving decentralization... Um, basically we can see in proof of work protocols, there's about five mining companies that just run everything, right? Um, they, 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 they contribute more than 50%, uh, of, of all Bitcoins being mined. Um, so, I mean, the odds of you being able to break into that business seem pretty small to me. So I just want to discuss two more, uh, items that I thought were pretty interesting here. Uh, the first item here is the idea of economic security, uh, that the proof of system, uh, especially Casper, basically enables here. So basically it says this, think about this, suppose you are a validator and you have your own money stored up as a stake in the network. 
It is in your own interest to act in the best interest of the network. Why would you act maliciously knowing that there is a huge part of your stake which could be slashed away and taken over if you do? So basically by adding this validator system, it de-incentivizes people to attempt to hack the system. That seems pretty good to me. And definitely if we take into account what we learned yesterday about you know, the vulnerabilities in uh, things like Bitfinex and even just Bitcoin in total, uh, that, that seems like a pretty good feature to me. Um, I need to do some more research to figure out you know, if there's other holes that people brought to attention. I'm sure there are, um, but, but that made sense to me. Um, I just, for this article, I wanna kinda of close with this thought. So um, does proof of stake basically solve the rich get richer problem? And a bunch of people argue that basically you need to have a significant portion of your funds as a stake, and even then you only get rewards in proportion to the amount that you're betting. So if you have more money in the system, you will get more money. John Choi makes a very good point, though. He says the main takeaway here should be that proof of stake is considerably more egalitarian, giving less benefits to having more capital than the incumbent proof of work based algorithm of Bitcoin. So it's not perfect, but Bitcoin is so skewed to having more capital that you know this proof of stake system and specifically Ethereum uh, Casper um, really, really uh, enables many more people, many more validators to stay in the game. Sure, you're gonna need to have some skin in the game, but, but it is possible. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, to kind of close out here, I wanna thank you guys all for watching today. Uh, if you like the video, please, please hit the like button and subscribe uh, to get more daily videos uh, as I show you my journey into learning about cryptocurrency and share some of the articles I'm finding very interesting uh, during my learning process. Um, if you're celebrating Thanksgiving and you haven't yet made uh, your sides, let me suggest baked maple brown sugar bacon. I'm going to include the link on how to make that. And I'll just tell you, I made this last year and it was a major, major hit. So um, hope you guys all have a great holiday if you're celebrating. Um, tune in tomorrow, and we'll learn more about cryptocurrency.